Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to part five of this series of tutorials for Apple Motion in which we're looking at building our own Kia and the many compositing tricks that we can learn from doing so. So let's get going. So this is where we left it last time. And in this part, I want to talk about two things, one of which is color grading and the other is the inside outside matte option. So first of all, let's look at color grading. So the best way of doing this is to come into our foreground group rather than grading at the top of it is to grade this despilled foreground. So I'm just going to grab a color color adjustments. So she is looking much too warm in relation to our cool background. So what we could do is we could come down here and take some warmth out of the shadows. That's starting to look a little bit better. And we could probably increase the contrast a bit, maybe reduce the exposure down a little bit. So I'm not very good at color grading, but that's probably the way we would go. However, there's an alternative way of approaching it, which is to say that actually we want to pull the background closer to the foreground. And that's often a better way of going about it. So for that, we'll come down into our background group. We'll grab our futuristic city. We'll come again to color and color adjustments. And this time around, we'll go the opposite way. So let's add some highlight warmth and a little bit of mid-tones warmth, something like this. I don't know really just roughly speaking. And that's often a better way to go is, is rather than to force your foreground to look like your background, make your background look like your foreground. It, it may well actually be a better option. Of course, in this case, we added this layer here. Let me turn that on and off. Do you remember that? It was our color correction of the D spill. And we added a color curves here. And we, obviously we added quite a lot of blue. And for our new look where we've color corrected the background, we might want to just dial that back just a little bit so it all sits in a little bit better. Anyway, that's that's color grading. It's very important for trying to match the foreground to the background. And while we're on that subject, and I'm not going to go into it in any detail here, is that you want to match the grain of the foreground with the grain of the background or rather the other way around. So in this case, our foreground is extremely grainy and we would need to add grain to our background to try and match that as far as we can. So as I say, the other thing I want to look at is inside outside matte. Now I'm going to step forward to 415 and I'm going to drag my mat to the top and I'm going to turn it on. And you can probably see down here, if I zoom in, that we've got these gray areas on her coat, which should be solid. Her coat is not transparent. It should be a solid white there. And we're seeing this gray. And the reason for that, if we come into our composite and our foreground and our original green screen plate, I'm just going to solo that. And if you look up here at the numbers, I want you to look at the numbers for the red, green and blue. And if I hover over this bit here, you can see we've got a red value of around 0.5, but the green value is way up above 0.8. And the blue value obviously is way down at 0.3. So this is why any Kia is going to struggle with this particular area. Similarly down here, you can see the green is very, very high in relation to the red. And given that the way that a, a green screen Kia works is to leverage the difference between the green and the other two channels, you can see how that's a problem. If the green in the foreground subject is greater than either the red or the blue, then the Kia is obliged to consider it to be transparent, which is what's happening here, of course. So let's sort that out by, in this case, using an inside mat. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to come into my mat group here and I want to make a new group inside this. So object new group and drag that into the mat group. I'm going to drag these two filters onto the new group and then I'm going to take everything that was inside the mat group and drop it into this new subgroup. And I'm going to call this main because it's going to be our, our nice main mat. But we're going to add an inside mat that's going to take care of this problem area here. So to create our inside mat, we're going to clone our main mat. So right click make clone layer. And I'm going to set the blend mode of this to lighten 
because we want to lighten up these areas. So to create our inside mat, I'm going to apply color and threshold. Now I could do this with levels or indeed with color curves, but threshold is actually a quite good way of doing this. So you can probably see that immediately adding that threshold in has taken care of quite a bit of that problem area. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make it completely hard. Now, this is something you don't normally don't want to do with your mat. You want to make it as as nice and soft on the edges as possible. But in this case, we're going to dial the smoothness all the way down and then we're going to reduce this threshold value till that edge is completely filled in. We're actually going really long way down to, to actually get that because it's such a problem area. So now we have actually got this very, very hard mat that is actually filling in that sleeve area. Obviously it's much too hard and we can soften it by adding a Gaussian blur. And that's already improved things a little bit. But what I want to do is I want to move this edge in a little bit. So I'm going to probably set that blur amount to something like eight and doing so actually moves it out. So you can, I don't know whether you can see, but the edge is expanding outwards and we actually want the edge to go inwards. So we're going to add another threshold, which is going to shrink the mat a little bit. So this time we do want a little bit of softness and you'll notice that if I just adjust that threshold value, the edge is starting to come back in again. So you can see now that with that, we've brought the edge back in inside the main edge. Again, it's a little bit too sharp. We want a little bit of a softer transition and we don't want to do that with the smoothness. We can add just another blur on top of that Gaussian blur and just soften that off just so we're getting a better edge like that. It's not going to be perfect. That is a really, really problematic little area, but Generally speaking, I think we've taken care of that. However, what we've done in the process, if I turn that, turn the mat group off, I want you to look at the hair over here. So this process has messed up our nice soft hair on the edge there, and, and we don't want that. So what we can do is we can simply just mask off this new inside mat, just so it's affecting this sleeve area. So we can do that very roughly using a rectangle mask, just draw a rectangle mask like that. That's going to take care of all of that area. And again, if we zoom into that hair now, you can see that obviously that's being excluded from that inside mat process. And it's only this problem area here that we're taking care of. You can see before a coat is see-through, after it's nice and solid there. So that's an inside mat. And I want to show you just for the purposes of demonstration, what an outside mat looks like. So it's basically the same thing, but the other way around, it takes care of the outside. Now in this particular shot, we don't really need it because we've done a nice job with all our other processes to take care of the backing and any problems associated with it. But I'm actually gonna come in and mess up my key by turning off this Bezier shape here and coming into this red blue and turning off that blue. And now we've got loads of garbage in the background, all these tracking marks and so on. So let's consider how we're going to make an outside mat. So we're going to again clone the main mat and let's drag this one up to the top. So let's just have a look at our mat. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of all this stuff in this outside mat. And I'm going to set its blend mode to darken which is the opposite of what we did before. And I could do this with a blur and a threshold, but I'm actually going to do it a different way this time. I'm going to use stylize and min max. What this does, if you remember, is it erodes or dilates the, the lighter and the darker areas. So what we want to do is we want to erode the dark areas to erode away the tracking marks. So I'm going to increase this radius till we've actually got rid of the tracking marks like that. We're up at around sort of 35. Obviously in the process, we've shrunk away the main mat and that's no good. So what we can do, having got rid of those tracking marks, I'm obviously not going to be able to get rid of those flags and we can just garbage mat those out. What we can do to restore the nice edges of our main key is to duplicate that min max and switch to maximum. And then we can increase this radius till we start to see our nice original mat again. So that's looking like that. 
And if we turn that on and off, you can see that has indeed taken care of those tracking marks like that because it's a much larger version of the mat that avoids the edges and is nice and hard. And on its own, if we switch this blend mode to normal, just so we can see it, it looks like that, very ugly, but it's big and wide and it's taking care of everything. We could even, if we wanted to make it doubly safe, we could add a threshold and remove the smoothness, literally just make it as solid as we want because it's taking care of everything that's well away from the edges of our nice clean main mat. So that's an outside mat. As I say, it was just for the purposes of demonstration in this case, it's not the right way of going about this particular shot. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to turn back on my blue there and my Bezier shape and that's our mat as, as we had it before and I think that's probably better. So the important thing to take away from this entire discussion is that the one thing we haven't done is to either blur or to shrink our main mat. We've taken great care to make sure that we've got the absolute best possible result without any shrinking or eroding or blurring. Because as soon as you get into blurring or shrinking, you're really just compromising your key and you really don't want to be doing that. Now, let's actually just to show you that. So if we were to blur this mat because we've got problems with it, it all just looks horrible. You know, we don't want soft blurry edges. It might, you know, solve problems, but you really should avoid ever doing that. Similarly, you want to avoid ever having to shrink the mat if we add, you know, as I said, min max is a shrinker. So let's do that. And we shrink the mat. It's like, oh no, 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 this is terrible. Again, we're losing the hair. We're, you know, this is not something you ever want to do if you can possibly avoid it. You want to have a nice pristine mat and everything else is going to flow from there if you've got that right. And that's why everything that we've done in this tutorial series is to maintain the best possible edge that we possibly can. So that's the end of part five. I do hope at some point to do an extra part in which I take you through the theory behind the various processes that we have looked at. So I hope you can join me for that. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.